Good morning, everybody. Um, I'm just going to do a video this morning that I hope will be self-explanatory. Young Mohammed is behind the camera, and he's very much part of the history of Jajir, and I'll explain that to you in a moment. But first of all, I'd like to tell you about these buildings and what is being done now. It, in these three stables here, these are new stables recently built, so the donkeys with bad hooves use these and have their own little paddock during the day. And you can see here that um, the ones that aren't let out, so this is Nico, Nico can't come out because he was castrated yesterday. I'll come on to that in a moment. But what I do want to say to you, if Mohammed will follow me, and if I could shout above the donkeys, when we first built our villa and came here, young Mohammed was one of the first people that came to work with us. He was only quite young then. And if he remembers, we just had three donkeys. We had Tommy and then Jerry and then Bida. And um, Mohammed and I used to look after them entirely on our own. Nobody else had anything to do with them. So he was very much start, the start of what happened here at Georgia. And then, because I didn't want to build a hotel, which we had planning permission for, we thought it might be a good idea if we had some working mules to give rides in the countryside where we live. And we built these five stables here. There were no walls, there was nothing else, nothing else was here at all. Just the five stables to keep working mules in. But once I looked a working mule in the eye, there is no way I could have been part of that tourist industry. So that was the start of our refuge. So yesterday, you'll see from my last post, the boys here, Ayu, young Mohammed, big Mohammed who's gone out, on the vet, they did four castrations. And the reason we do those castrations is that when donkeys come from, however old they are, they're quite driven and the male donkeys will fight with each other or they will cause problems, they will mate, and we it's just not right to be breeding foals in a country where working animals still have to be looked after. So, they're all castrated, they're much happier, much more content, and they can live in mixed herds. However, for the last year, we haven't been able to get anaesthetic, so we have 18 waiting to be castrated, and we did the first four yesterday. Nico was the first, and the person who brought Nico to us actually paid for Nico's castrations. The others, of course, we have to pay for ourselves. So I'll just take you down the hospital block, and you can just see briefly. Here's Gertie, waiting to get up. She'll get up very soon when the boys come round, but she's doing extremely well. Um, the next stable, Hero, who's very cross because he was castrated yesterday. If you can see, he has a broken hoof and we want to have him out in the paddock with the other females. But you will see from earlier videos how angry he gets. Now he should be a lot calmer. And in here we have the other two castrations. One is called Stanley who came to us in a dreadful state, if you look back through Instagram or through Facebook. He really was in a pitiful state. He's done very well, he's recovered, and now he's gelded. And behind him, we have Victor, whose owner died, and he's come here to retire. They get on quite well. Now, what I'm going to do is walk you through into the main paddock. Just a quick glimpse as we go of Ada, who's also doing well, and little Pippa, who's very anxious to come out and play with everybody. She'll be out in a moment. Just while we're walking round, I want to say to people how thrilled I was to hear this morning on the BBC News that in the UK they have now opened the zoos and the 
um, safari parks because it means they can start earning a living again and none of their animals will be under threat. We've been incredibly lucky here that although we haven't had any visitors since March, we have been able to keep going and thanks to all of you, we've been able to pay our men and now we're starting to prepare for visitors when we hope they'll come back later in the summer. So if you follow me round here, Mohammed and I, you can see over there, Tinker. Yeah. That's Tinker. Tinker's having a sunbathe. And Tinker came to us about four years ago, ungelded. Well, Mohammed will remember we had to keep him separate from everyone. He fought, he was so angry. Now he's one of our most favourite donkeys. When visitors come, Tinker's first there to say hello. He loves company. And I want you to see what's happening here. This is what we're starting to do. People who visit know that the donkeys are well looked after and whilst it might look a bit rough in places that, that they know that it's very clean but we won't we're not going to get visitors back for ages so what we want to be able to do is have virtual visits here and put on our best face so the men who work here permanently are renovating this block they're re um, surfacing it all and that will all be painted with the other stables and open for visitors and also open for virtual visitors. Over there, just point the camera there Mohammed, can you? There's two little donkeys in the corner are the two that came from Esawera a couple of months ago where they were abandoned by the side of the road and the baby had been hit by a vehicle. She had an injured leg. We call them Ruby and Pearl and they're doing splendidly well, really well. Okay. Oh, Tinker, you've woken up. He says a camera, I'd like to say hello. Are you, can we help him get up? He's a very old man, and this is what we have to do all day and every day to make sure that he's, he keeps old. And you can see, he's, um, those of you who've known Tinker for a long time, he's getting very, very thin now. There's nothing we can do about that. That's just old age. I'm starting to get that way. It happens to all of us. But Tinks, you're a good boy, aren't you? You see how anxious he is to go and see Mohammed and Ayu. He just loves company. Don't fall over again, Tinker. Okay, so very briefly before I finish. You can see what the men have done here. They've built a special drain they have a big trench down to the main drain so that the paddock doesn't get flooded. All that has to be done by hand. It's absolutely amazing. You can see their resurfacing all ready to paint. So, are you still following me? Morning, Penny. This is Penny with the broken hoop. All was very interested in what's going on. This was not a good idea, was it? So if we just look over into the paddock, you can see where the bad hooves are sunbathing. And if anyone's wondering where the main herd is, it's all down in the bottom field. So for now, that's all the news to date, and we'll speak to you again soon. Bye.